friends, this is Rob the Sapphire Gardener and SK2 and we got some new trees for the homestead so let me take you outside onto our deck here in a minute and then I'm going to show you what we got as I uh, take them out of the box and put them in some pots so hang tight. around that patio umbrella pole. Oops! I did it again. Oops! I did it again. <laughs> yes, when I think that. Oops! So, I was correct. There's three total. Just two boxes, and these look to be in very good condition. So for this one came out of the starter pot a little bit, but that's okay because they're getting uh, up potted right away anyway. So the first two look really good, nice leaf growth on it, and these were. Advertised to be uh, one to two feet tall. So we got truth in advertising because these are probably between one and two feet tall, I'd say. First two are in great shape. And whew, third one's in even better shape. So yeah, yeah, maybe not. Maybe these two are in the best shape, but this one's okay. Yeah, I think they're all in really good shape. So, we're going to get all three of them put in bigger pots. So all three trees look good. They look uh, as expected, if not more, because a lot of times companies say their trees are a certain size and then you get little starts. But these are nice, healthy trees, look to be uh, probably one to two years old. And we're going to take them out of these little four inch pots and we're gonna put them in these for now. Uh, I actually ordered some uh, larger pots just for these to go into. And uh, we'll up pot them a few times over the years and then hopefully within the next uh, two years we start to get fruit from uh, all of them if we're lucky. So let me do some up potting and uh, bring you guys back. organic uh, store-bought potting mix this time. Normally we like to make our own but I'm in a little bit of a hurry. So we're going to put some uh, potting mix in. We're going to put just a little bit of uh, compost in. We're going to add the trees. We're going to use as much of the soil that came with the trees as we can and then we're going to top it off with the rest of the compost. And I've got some uh, peat moss that I'll put along the top of it or we may use some uh, wood chip mulch to help uh, maintain moisture. Yes, we do keep compost next to our deck at almost all times so it just shows how much potting up and soil amending we do here
mix this up. will get up potted several times over the years as the plants grow we'll up pot them to the largest pots that we're capable of managing as far as lifting and transporting in and out of the garage because these are citrus plants and they will not survive in our weather here in northern Virginia so we got a baby them Yeah, I think I'm as guilty as a lot of our other gardening friends who are cedarholics and planaholics. We just, uh, as much as we say we're going to stop buying trees and plants, yeah, it's, uh, it's a passion. And as long as you can afford it, and you look at it as an investment, I don't think there's anything wrong with it because if these trees do start giving us citrus fruit, it'll be a nice, healthy addition to the garden. That's the way I look at it. Because if I look at it any other way, I'd probably have to admit I'm an addict and get some trees. Now this one, like the first one, got healthy root growth but nowhere near as much as that second one. That second one was thickly packed with roots but we'll see how these all do and these containers on our deck for the next few weeks we get the specialty pots that come in I'll try to remember to show even though we, we have some in our garden already but none up here on the deck but I think most people have seen bottom watering pots before they just have a little uh, inch or two inch reservoir that holds the water in the bottom and allows your plants to reach down for that and to keep them well moistened so all three are done. I don't think SK2 can reach the peat moss. I keep that down in the sapper cave because that's where I do the majority of uh, potting up new plants, either in the basement, the sapper cave, or right outside on the seed starting planter bench. But, yep, these are all nice, healthy looking citrus trees, tangelo trees. So, hopefully, they get a, a good start here. I'll also uh, add some uh, rooting hormone. I'll do a, a liquid solution of that once I add the, the mulch or the, the peat moss to the top. I'll give it a good water with that uh, mycorrhizal fungi and uh, hopefully these do as well for us as the first one did. Alright so this is uh, about a week and a half later and we got our pots in and this is what I mean about the pots with reservoirs. You can get these pretty much anywhere. Any of your Home Depot, your Walmarts, your Dollar Generals. But this is what we want to use for plants that we uh, bring in and out of the garage. We have smaller ones, medium sized ones, and we've got some bigger ones in the garage that are about the size of this one here, which will be the final destination for the tangelos, but not for the figs. The figs, eventually, we wanna put those in ground because they should be uh, hardy in our zone as long as we protect those. And we've actually transferred 
one of our figs down here into that huge pot and one into this one and in a later video we'll show how we winterize those um, to protect them from the cold and i probably should have mentioned the way this works we can water through that cavity at the bottom and this has a t or an x shape indentation here so your soil actually goes down to the water level and wicks it up to the roots if the roots need it so that should keep our pots moist in the winter we just uh water into there and then the soil will wick it up if you got a good mix like we have here in this pot and uh these won't come into the house some people may use these for house plants but these uh the closest they'll come to the house is going into the garage so this will work for us so we're going to transfer our three smallest figs into these and our three tangelos into these medium sized ones which are the exact same design and for our potting mix we're going to make this one from scratch unlike the other one because i've got more time we're going to use a cocoa core and we're going to add in a, a blend if you can see oh, actually let me spin you around our potting mix a few simple ingredients we're going to use the cocoa core we're going to add some vermiculite. We're going to add a little bit of uh, rock dust and a little bit of perlite. And we've got some uh, organic fertilizer over there, which I'm not going to advertise the brand name, but it is organic. So we're going to mix all this up. And when we do, it'll look like this down here in the bucket, which we've already mixed. So we do one cocoa core brick. We do about a cup of vermiculite, maybe a third of a cup of rock dust. And this isn't rocket science. So we do some estimations and a cup of the perlite. And then we do probably about a quarter cup of uh, the organic fertilizer. And it comes out to be, this is a five gallon bucket. So I would say it comes out to be about two and a half gallons of a potting mix. And if this was the first time we were potting up, we would probably add a little bit of lime into these and a little bit of um, compost, but all the pots originally had all that in it. So this time we're just going to do the potting mix because uh, it should have enough in there to last. All right, so about a half hour later, I got three of the figs potted up and the three tangelos potted up. And one of the good things when you're up potting uh, plants and trees like this is you get a good chance to look at the root system to see how they're doing. The figs are doing great. They were not root bound, but they were getting uh, to that point where they definitely needed to go into something bigger. The last fig I have in a grow pot and I may keep that in a grow pot, but I'll put it in a bigger one because these are wicking pots. So if the roots start growing out of the side, as soon as they start making contact with air, they stop growing and they die off at that point. Not die off, but any that are exposed to the air will die back. So. I'll get that into something a little bigger since the other ones, the roots were all over the place, but I digress. One of the good things about these pots that we can bottom water, and let me flip you around to show you this. One of the great things about these, and you can see all of them are like this, our uh, potting mix was very damp which I did on purpose. If these were in traditional pots, I would make the mix a little uh, less moist, but the water drains down into this reservoir. If this overwatered, the excess water will just spill out of the reservoir. So 
my comment a couple of weeks ago about it not wetting the floor is only accurate if you wet from the bottom if you water from the bottom if you top water and you walk away and it's over water the water can still spill out if you're in an area that it freezes you may still be some slipping damage and wet floors are slippery anyway but last point i want to make about these while they're outside especially in our area where the mosquitoes are a menace and maybe you know some of our friends up in canada they've told me their mosquitoes are the size of helicopters you can put something in here because this is exposed mosquitoes can get in there and lay eggs we use a, uh, a mosquito crumbles and this has ingredients that retard the growth of mosquitoes so they can lay the eggs the eggs hatch turn into whatever larval stage they go into but then they never mature into a uh, adult mosquito and supposed to be organic way to kill insects well, i don't see an armory tag but we've been using this for years so anytime we've got pots that uh, have uh, spaces in the bottom like that we just put a, a few of the granules in there every month and uh, it stops mosquitoes from uh, growing out and this we uh, order online also, uh, but you can buy them at the big box stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, um, and they're supposed to be safe in your gardens and around pets. So I'm going to sprinkle some in all six of these and uh, should be done. So we got them placed out here with our other potted fruit trees and plants and we'll keep them here and uh, organize them a little bit better because we definitely don't want them too close to the fire pit when we start that up but we've just got a lot of fruit trees out here and some of our more mature fig trees like these here will be going into the ground and that'll make some space so we'll have four tangelo trees to take inside some uh dragon fruit plants and some fig plants not figs i'm sorry some uh olive plants but uh most of the rest will go in the grounds the persimmon trees will go in the ground in the fall when they go dormant uh, yeah just a lot of plants that we'll put out and uh i'll try to show it's still early in the season but i'll try to show on a future video uh, how we wrap our fig trees in ground and now any that are in pots that we leave on the decks because uh, fig trees are a great patio fruit. So I'll show how we do it. It's a simple way real quick, uh, either on a future video or attached in a future video with uh, more garden updates. So, as always, this is Rob, the Sapper Gardener, representing Essayance Family Garden, saying, God bless our great country, America, you, wherever you reside around the world, your garden, your harvest, your kitchen, your meals, and especially your family to have health, success, and prosperity, especially in these troubling times with a fly flying in my face. So, <laughs> take care. Sapper out.